I never expected to see these today. The LaFerrari and LaFerrari prototypes, but those are just some of the highlights. This is gonna be a good one. It's hard to believe that the last time I did a complete video with the McLaren 675 LT Spider was already a full year ago, blasting this thing around Silverstone. Well, today we're here in London to head to Salon Privé with SCC. In fact, around me is a pretty epic convoy of cars. We're going to be led by a Pagani Huayra. We've got the Koenigsegg CCR, a Koenigsegg Yesco, and so many more supercars for this very colourful parade. And that's the idea of today, hence why I brought my one of one MSO Orion Purple McLaren 675 LT Spider to join this drive, albeit in central London with 20 mile an hour speed limits, to head to Salon Privé to check out some of the epic cars that await us on the lawn. For today's drive, SCC have arranged all of the cars to be convoying in colour order, plus how they're parked up at Salon Privé. So over here, we have the line of red cars down to the Koenigsegg Yesco at the far end. Then opposite those, we have the white cars just here, Martini 918 Spider, McLaren Senna chassis number one. I've seen this a number of times at various events over the years, but that was the first of the 500 Sennas. Come further up, we've got the blue cars, and we will keep walking through to go find some more. Ferrari 488 Pista coming through. Lovely in the morning sunshine. Dakar coming through. Funny plate on it, but there's a lot of cars around. Obviously, this is the gentle start of the morning as everybody arrives. We are right beside the lovely Koenigsegg CCR. I've actually seen this car a number of times over the years as well, but you kind of get the point here because everything is lining up literally in the color order. We are in front of an Artura and a GT3 Touring, which is very nice. This feels like the calm before the storm because there's going to be a whole lot more to see at Salon Privé as well. So let's kind of just watch some of the cars rolling in, get ready for the convoy drive, the parade as we enter the grounds, because there's kind of a special story about the last time I drove in there. A personal story, a special story, which will make sense a little bit later. Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to a bit of a hypercar and supercar takeover here in London. Up towards the yellow end, we've got the GT4. Check out this 992 GT3 RS, yellow over the red wheels. What a speck, and the red decals as well. The Pagani Huayra is up here, and we've got Chiro and Scoot who are about to head off with the Lambo Murcielago, which no doubt is about to sound amazing. Come on, Chiro, let's hear it. Oh, oh, oh. V12s. Well, long live 12 cylinder engines. What a soundtrack. And there's a Vanquish S coming in just over there. Lovely spec, in fact, just endless rolling cars coming through now, but this is what we like to start off the day. That carbon with the yellow accents and the yellow interior, hence why it's parked up with the yellow section, looks mega. And I'm feeling the vibrations of this. Love it. From one 12 cylinder to another. V12 plate, bat wings at the ready. Always. <laughs> Have a good day. How they roll. Oh, look at that. Is that a lava orange GT4 RS? Nice. That's cool. SF90 coming through. I did consider bringing mine because of it being a lovely blue. We've got a bit too much gray over here though for my liking. V8 Vantage, Vantage Roadster, DBS, DB11, Vanquish, a pair of DB9s. Over on this side, obviously we've got the Archura and the GT3 Touring come through. We've got an AMG GT Roadster in the Petronas style livery, 650S, Ferrari Roma, and the McLaren 570. And of course, Koenigsegg. Doors opening, always look special. It's a nice morning, this, nice and chilled and calm before the storm. Now the SF90, this one is an Assetto Fiorano, hence the painted livery. I actually quite like that. The almost primer-like paint I'm normally not the biggest fan of, but that kind of works. Engines are on, everything is warming up. We are about to be departing, so I should probably step into the 675 LT, swing in here then pull the door down. Lovely soft close, always feels very fancy. Comfort, access, pull the stalk for that. Start it up. Look, doing well with this. We'll be at 20,000 miles soon. Exactly what it's for. The Ghani Huayra leads the charge. So I think the yellow cars technically go first. Then it's gonna be the greys. And then it's gonna be onto the purples and it's gonna be an interesting lineup when we get to Salon Privé because of course there are tons of other things that are there as well, like the other 
dealers, brands, stands, things to go and see. This is kind of cool, isn't it? Hurricane Evo, MC20, Hurricane Spider, we hold here after all the Astons. It's kind of interesting actually, Lambos are very yellow. Aston's are very grey. <laughs> Everything around us. Whew, it's kind of cold today as well. It's currently 11 degrees Celsius. It was about 6 or 7 degrees when we left earlier on. This is, um, yeah, a chilly morning. We are right after the SF90, which means it is time for us to move or start moving slowly. Across the little bumps here. We're in Battersea Park, so just on the south side of the River Thames through London. It's a short little convoy from here to Royal Hospital Chelsea, where Salon Privé London takes place. This is in April. It's a second event, really, around Salon Privé itself, which takes place later in the year at Blenheim Palace. Lift system up. It takes ages in this car. You just have to kind of wait for it. But what I love about this thing is, despite the fact that it's had a pretty intense life, it's done a lot of outings, trips, track days, crazy stuff, it still runs brilliantly. The 675LT is just the McLaren to have, to use, because they do just work. Right. Work, run, reliable, good parts if needed, great community. Sadly, I recently missed a convoy weekend drive of 14 of these that went out together for some fun, which sounded pretty mega, to be honest. I tell you what, the lineup in the mirror is pretty cool. As you look back there, there's a lot of supercars making their way out for this. Just takes a little bit of time to get out this junction, out of the park where we are starting and then actually onto the road. As we're now in the sunshine and it's lovely, roof down, that's what a car like this is for. This, I did actually think about bringing the 296 GTS for today. It's newer, etc., etc. but an opportunity to take this out is always a good opportunity. So that's where I landed. Finally, we are away for about 30 seconds. This is not the same as driving around Silverstone, I'm not gonna lie. Oh well, it's a good view in front and behind, so just enjoying the day and where we're going. This is nice, isn't it? As we arrive across the bridge, not that you can see a whole lot, but London on a beautifully sunny morning. Now, what's particularly interesting to me and kind of memories, if I could say, is throwing back to the last time I drove in through the gates we're about to go through. It was back in October 2011, 12 and a half years ago, and I was riding in a Ferrari F50. It was the first time I'd ever been in my poster car. My first poster car was a yellow Ferrari F50, and my friend invited me to go for the ride, the convoy towards Chelsea Auto Legends, which used to take place at this event, or this venue, I should say. And we're in the F50, going through the gate, and none other than Sir Sterling Moss, rest in peace, was waving the flag, waving the chequered flag as we drove in, which of course is a special moment. He was a special man, and it was a special day for me going in an F50. And now we're here in a car I absolutely love as well, the 675 LT Spider, in the traffic jam on the bridge, but about to head back over and back in to the, the famous grounds here of the Royal Hospital. So. I can't really complain, it's one of those kind of throw it back days, you know, old school type car event for me to just get one of the Schmiemobiles out, to go and have some fun, to go and enjoy it, to go be part of everything. That is the height of our acceleration today. That's all we've got in us. Zero to 20 in half a second. Done. <laughs> Brad just found a Wix catalog, which is where we went with this actually, with Martin. Schmartin left the Wix catalog in the car when we went to buy toilets in a McLaren. That sounds really wrong, but that did happen. We took this car to the shop to buy the facilities that we needed at the Schmuseum that are now being installed. <laughs> the things that happen. Here we are, we have arrived. This is the gate, throwback and a half. I think things out here have been remodeled since. I actually used to live kind of behind the trees over there. So this was a, a very familiar neck of the woods where we're now entering just ahead of the day beginning. So as you can see, last little bits of setup still taking place, but we can go straight on through. I think we've got a little holding pen before we have the, the grand arrival, basically through the center. I can see some very nice cars in there, which we shall go and check out in a moment. Go for a little tour around. Oh yeah, F40, bunch of other stuff. So let's kind of see where this takes us. It's funny to think the last time I was here was in an F50 12 years ago. <laughs> 
<laughs> time flies. Time flies. I've been making videos for a very, very, very long time. That was about 5,000 videos ago. Wow. The center arrived. Center chassis number one. I think that car was actually at the McLaren Technology Center on the day that I collected my Senna about six or well, five and a half years ago. But the idea with this was to create some aero paintwork. It is actually painted with this livery. Morning. And then the Martini 19 behind here. <laughs> what a line. I hadn't really realized, but this is full Martini gang. The 918, which is a Vicec package, and then the Dakar, and then beyond that, seems to keep going, doesn't it? The aero kit again on the 911 and the crazy signed 812 Superfast. That's actually quite amazing. It's a lot of signatures. Kind of similar to what we did recently with Patches. Her GTS, everybody kind of pausing before we're going to be taken over to the main lawn. Look at that line of cars. Look at that line of cars. That's mega, super cool. I'm just casually standing here next to the CCR. And while we're at it, adding my little squiggle on here as well. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> Done. Added to the mix. Senna dropping down into race mode. You can always tell because the tyres sit significantly more snugly into the arches. And of course it looks a little bit better for the parade and the display. But the paintwork on this car is absolutely insane. Literally, as I said, chassis number one. And it was driven for its running in mileage literally the week it was collected on a road trip down, I think, to the south of France. So yeah, having my LT next to the Senna, feels a bit like a throwback there, doesn't it? It would be a foolish mistake if I didn't come and take a look at this, the Koenigsegg Jesko, here with Koenigsegg London. I have actually seen this very car before. It was at an event that I went to earlier in the year at New Year up in Scotland. But this thing in the bright red paintwork looks magnificent. One of the first to be delivered in the entire world of Koenigsegg's absolutely ridiculous machine. In fact, I've been lucky to go out in a number of them now. In fact, driving the car for the first time last year here in the UK, the Blue Factory car, and also recently Tommy from Super Futura Koenigsegg UK came by to the Schmuseum with the black car that I got to drive and I've even ridden in the Absolute with Christian von Koenigsegg but just look at this thing absolutely standing out like you would not believe it is super special the Jesko named after Christian von Koenigsegg's father Jesko von Koenigsegg I mean just look at all of the details I love the spec it's a simple spec but it works very very well and suits the car incredibly nicely. I do hear some engines starting though, so it might be about to be time to head on up and go get ready for this drive-in. Car noises are plenty around here as everyone gears up. We best get back in here again. That Aston sounds amazing. Not a bad little gathering. That was the sound of a Ferrari V12 from back there. The 812. This is looking pretty cool. So, LT time. Oh, if I can press the button, pop the door. Nice reflections. Let's hop in here. My one of 500 McLaren 675LT. Although, 500, um, well, you can check exclusive car registry to see exactly how many there are. <laughs> I kind of forgot to start my own car's engine. And it would help also if I put it in drive. <laughs> Come on, there we go, in drive. <laughs> it happens to everyone. <laughs> But we are driving through. I think we've got a bit of a parade to enter the venue effectively. And then I'm probably going to be hopping out and having a chat with some of the organizers. Um, kind of going with the flow right now. I presume we're being taken down the middle. It's kind of what it looks like. Just follow the cars in front and hope we end up in the right place. Hope that somebody's pointing at where to go. So we get to drive through the, uh, the line of the yellow cars. And we'll see where they end up taking us. Good morning, good morning. Come back Pop back in a second for sure. This is kind of fun. What a cool setup. We're sneaking back through right now. Safely does it. Spe special permission, I should add, to come and basically say hello and go grab a mic and be part of the uh, the chitter chatter for the moment. So let me at some point safely run to the other side. Let's go for it. Do you think one of the most amazing things I always find being in this industry, you know, working in the automotive world is the community around it and how cars speak through any language barriers or backgrounds or any cultures. If you like cars, you like cars and you've immediately got that connection and 
you want to support other people who share the same passion, you work together. It's, it's always amazing to me how that works, how, how that like globally connects. Needless to say, it is extremely busy here at the Super Futuro stand. Excuse the bad pun, but hey, this is our second Koenigsegg Yesco of the day. This is the exact car that Tommy came to visit the Museum with a few months ago when it had just arrived over here. Perfect plate for a car like this. Not exactly common that you see two Yescos in one place. Also here, Super Futura have the Koenigsegg Agera N, the N being effectively a one-off, you could say, customised for its owner of the Koenigsegg Agera. That was really the epic era where it all kind of really became something big, hey? And obviously Stradman, my friend James, now has his Agera as well. Over on this side is a Regera, one of the 80 with its Koenigsegg Direct Drive, single gear, and again, you can't really get a better plate than that for an egg, can you? The Koenigsegg Regera, pretty spectacular lineup of the cars that Super Vitera have brought out in force here at Salon Privé. This is quite the spectacular lineup. We're actually going to skip straight down past the LaFerrari and past the two prototypes to explain this story and where it began with the 458 Italia. Of course, Ferrari's epic V8 supercar that basically was used as a test dummy to create the LaFerrari. These cars come from the car's private collection, Cars Ferrari. And this was prototype MP09 of the LaFerrari. It was the last prototype to test the hybrid powertrain, so the 6.3 litre V12 with the car system, but based on a 458 Italia's aluminium chassis. Now you can see the number plate is very apt for the car. You can see some of the hybrid stuff going on at the back of it as well. And Ferrari sold off some of the prototypes Type. So this is actually electronically limited to only 30 kilometers an hour, so less than 20 miles per hour, because effectively it is not a road legal car, it doesn't have full roadworthy suspension, so it's basically a maneuvering speed. And as you can imagine, this was the thing that was running around Maranello at the time, testing extra cooling intakes up at the top, at the back as well, but disguised as a 458 Italia before the next prototype, MP10, arrived in much more of a LaFerrari look in terms of the bodywork. This was used for further testing of ESP, of the electronics, of the different systems. You can see all of the emergency stop equipment that it has inside and still a very unusual look, but trying things. The wing is up at the back, for example, and the shape was really giving an opportunity to test more of the aerodynamic style, how it would work, how everything comes together. Before, of course, the production car arrived, the LaFerrari that we know of, which they made 499, then one extra, and then followed it up with the LaFerrari Aperta, of which there are just over over 200 and then of course you could technically say the FXXK and the FXXK Evo that came a little bit after that. So this is quite the story from the 458 Italia through some of the prototypes to the LaFerrari. But I do want to point out this one's quite unusual because the insides of the barrels for the wheels are actually painted in the Rosso Corsa to match the car and the calipers, which is quite an unusual modification that clearly the owner of this car has decided to add to it. But that's quite spectacular to be able to run a little bit through the history of one of the most legendary hypercars and see them on display here from the Cars Ferrari private collection, as I mentioned, and with a little bit of information about each car. But for me, to see these things, they do trade a little bit. They were offered to VIP Ferrari customers back at the time. Of course, are mostly a display piece and something to be able to see at an event like this. So amazing that the owners have brought them out. It is exceptionally busy here, but I'm going to do my best to take you on a bit of a tour around. We will go and see what we can find. Let's start right here. Brabus Top Cars, Brabus dealer here in the United Kingdom. And of course, I recently visited Brabus in Bottrop and took a full tour around their HQ. I drove the Rocket R. This is the full tuning package for the 911 Turbo S. And of course, we've got the G-Wagon behind and a Range Rover as well. But Brabus very much expanding their portfolio and the different cars that they're offering. I'm gonna come through this way where we have a 288 GTO. There are lots of cars from various different dealers here all around. And next to it is something that's been gathering quite a lot of attention, the 512BB Koenig Special. I mean, look at this thing, the tuning from that era. Look at the extra wings and fins and crazy wild bodywork all over it. You don't see many of those around, but they are really quite cool. I'm gonna squeeze in down this way though and come and well, I'll do my best to take you for a little tour of what we can find. We've got a pair of Lamborghini Countaches here from Furlongers. I actually drove an XJ220 for the first time with Furlongers many, many years ago. But those are really quite nice as well. Let's come and squeeze through this way, straight through the crowd. 
past the lovely Vantage because I want to come over in that direction. So I'm going to have to figure out how to get there first. Come with me around here. We've got the 911 SCRS, a nice 550 Marinello, XK140. You can see this is, this is busy today. But here is a Ferrari F40 GT with Joe Macari. The GT wearing the white OZ wheels, OZ wheels I should say, looking really, really nice. Obviously, one of the fan favourites of the show. That, however, is a bit of a shmi favourite, the Lamborghini Miura. This is a P400S. Black, of course, but I would choose a bright colour regardless with the gold detailing, gold wheels, and the gold lower side skirts. Always looks fantastic. Got the Alfa Romeo 2600 Spider. Plenty more things to come and take a nose at. The DB6 just here. In fact, next to the DB6 is an unusual, rare little thing. The DB7 Zagato. The DB7 Zagatos, which are followed up as well by the DB AR1s, the America Roadster one, only available for the American market. Very unusual, but very cool to see. And in fact, let's squeeze around towards the front grille. Familiar double bubble roof of a Zagato product, and then a very aggressive large front grille on the nose of it as well, next to the lovely DB6. There is actually another Pagani here. This Huayra Roadster is actually from Pagani of Manchester, new Pagani dealership in the UK. And this car kind of reminds me of my Ford GT, red with the gold details and accents. This car is actually for sale with them, one of the 100 Roadsters. And looking, well, look at the engine back there. Twin turbo V12 nestled in between those buttresses. This is a very special thing. Absolutely lovely. Hopefully, at some point, I'll be able to pop up and visit the team up there. It'll be lovely to go and see what is going on in the new setup that has recently had its launch and official opening. Well, we absolutely have to take a look here. Not one, but two Aston Martin Valkyries. In fact, the other day here at Salon Privé London, they actually had an event for Valkyries and had 14 of them together. This particular car is in full exposed dark red burgundy carbon fibre. The whole bodywork looks absolutely extraordinary. These things are literally the height of engineering right now when it comes to a car. The Valkyrie has really stepped up the game and the amazing thing is that these cars have actually been driven basically in and out and obviously one mile on the road with this much aero and they start to pick up dirt left, right and centre absolutely all over them. But respect to people who actually are starting to drive them. It's amazing to see that Valkyrie owners are actually getting these cars out to different events together and getting them out on the roads and enjoying them because it was a slow and stuttered start for the cars. You know, I think it goes without saying that there was a massive amount of technology inside these things which created some hurdles. At the end of the day, they are amazing. Absolutely amazing. The Aston Martin badge, which is underneath the lacquer, super thin to be absolutely as light as possible. Obviously, steering wheel removed on here to make it easier to get in and out of these things. In fact, I mean, just everything about it is, is out of this world. The more time you spend looking around them, it's lucky to have my friend Passon's purple with gold leaf example of the Valkyrie at the garage the other day but there are 150 coupes 85 spiders and the 40 AMR pros the race cars plus the various prototypes and things as well and we've got the sun out on them in fact with the sun out we've got to come over here because look at this red carbon when the sunshine is shining on it look at that color look at that that is amazing it's very hard to do red carbon actually it often comes out looking almost brown goes completely wrong but that looks great well this is cool the f40 is coming past and obviously a lot of people came running all of a sudden but why wouldn't you for a car like this looks awesome and being able to see it here cars on the move is always like that icing on the cake that sounds great what a legend it feels like there's a lot happening at once Kuntash coming out now of course with the doors up because why wouldn't you if you're driving a Lamborghini Kuntash Oh, followed by everything from here. Is the 512 Koenig Special coming as well? Yes, it is. That is a very unusual thing, isn't it? They basically made mass power just all around a little bit crazy. I think we're gonna get a bunch of cars starting and moving. But you won't see me complaining about it anytime soon. Oh yeah, look, the DB7 Zagato's just moved up there as well. Obviously the 288 GTO is now coming past. Lovely. 
thanks to ECR, what I hadn't realized earlier is that I have actually seen this particular LaFerrari many times before. I just looked it up because I'm kind of interested in this stuff and was intrigued by the prototypes alongside and discovered that I do know this one, that I have seen this one, which is kind of cool. It's had a few changes since, but the exact same car that back, what, five to eight years ago, I'd seen at a couple of different events with one of its earlier owners, which is absolutely awesome if you ask me. It's nice to be able to make those connections thanks to ECR. We are about to have another little parade, so we need to hop back into the car and get ready for that. But I very quickly got to say about this, the amethyst paint on this GT3 is amazing, as are the neodyme gold wheels. They look really nice. The color scheme is reminiscent of my 718 GT4 that I used to have, and it suits this car very well. And I wouldn't mind another purple with gold car in the future, certainly wheels in this color. Got some ideas, maybe something to watch. Anyway, it's time for the LT, so let's step in here and get this started in just a second. All right, we are back in the car, back in this lovely thing. It's a really nice interior in here. Very focused, very about the driver. And ready for onward driving, I guess, for the parade. I don't know what's happening. We'll figure it out as we go. We are all working this out as we go. Um, we're going at the front. We've been told we're at the front. <laughs> we're in front of the Pagani, <laughs> just to confuse everybody. This is kind of fun, leading the parade. I've ended up at the front, literally at the very front, which means all the pressure is on me to go the right way. Well, I mean, we've got marshals who are kindly helping, obviously. Just kind of, oh, that's Auto Vivendi, their cars. Right, I totally missed that. Auto Vivendi Supercar Club in London. Um, and there are the bugs that I don't remember. I think we showed them earlier. But anyway, bugs, Lotus, Rolls Royce are here. Lots of things are here and we're just, winging it and going with the flow and seeing what happens. It will be what it will be. <laughs> right, out we roll. Thank I think you guys. We are literally heading out of here. Bit of theatre, doesn't hurt anybody, does zone. it? Quite good fun. So out we go. Guys, the end of the day, Keep the end of the event. Cars, See ya. <laughs> oh look, there are cars coming from the other way as well. I don't even know. Ah, oh, I get it. I think that's the last of the cars that haven't. Great, great gone around yet, so that's the back. Great, We've caught up with the back of the Hi, I see ya. <laughs> um, great fun, great fun. We decided to kind of make this a, a bespoke loop and go around again, but the YRS followed us. <laughs> Everyone else exited. I wanted to be the first car and the last car just to wrap up the day in a funny way. Um, but we've ended up behind the R8 and the AMG GTs and with the Hyra behind us. <laughs> Technically, the blue cars are up there and the black cars are right behind, so we should be between them because we're purple. It kind of would fit about there, wouldn't it? <laughs> Everything's going behind. <laughs> funny we, we've done a bit of a swap <laughs> we are now last we are now at the back basically they are going around to load the cars so I think there must be an exit in a different direction and then I'm just a moron who <laughs> went round in a circle <laughs> we, yeah, we thought we'd do it again you know be the last one <laughs> <laughs> this is deja vu, except this time we're behind a 918 and a Huayra. <laughs> we're, just, we're just enjoying the event so much, we had to stay here as long as possible. It's been a great weekend, thank you so much. <laughs> You're just going to carry on going round, aren't you? <laughs> no, I, I think we should probably depart now. Well, thank you very much, it's been amazing. I'm sure everyone's had a great time. That's the end. The show is over. Been a great event, actually. Really enjoyed that. <laughs> Amazing. Completely coincidentally, V12 Vantage. Lovely V12 Vantage S. That was not that I know of here today, but maybe it was a visitor or somebody. Either way, it was very nice as that was really narrow. Time to make our way back to base. We have found the McDonald's GT3 RS, which in traffic with a wing that big genuinely looks stupid. It, it's actually kind of funny how obnoxious that is in a good way. I like it. It's fun. That thing. That thing. We're just having a little chat at the traffic light. What a car. In addition to the GT3 RS in front, behind us, we actually have the, I think, Novatech Pista, which is quite funny because we're not intentionally in any form of convoy. Like, we're just driving away from here, and yet we are kind of in a convoy by mistake, which is just entertaining anyway. Um, slow and steady wins the race, thanks to London's 20 mile an hour traffic zones. Well, the whole city is 20 miles an hour. Uh, 
and slow and boring and busy and yeah it's kind of fun actually we've got Porsche, McLaren and Ferrari it's like the Holy Trinity but it's not a 918, a P1 and a LaFerrari but it's still kind of cool and we're home the 675 LT is back on the Ben Pack Auto Stacker probably going to stay there for now because it does need a clean up after this and being at Petrol Hedonism Underground last week it's all happened very quickly. I did just take a look at how much mileage I've done on this car since it was last serviced around seven or eight months ago. And it's less than 200 miles. And that's nowhere nearly enough because a car like this needs to be driven. I do say with this thing, it's kind of a 500 to 1,000 miles a year car. That's where it sits in the garage, right? That's what the future of it's gonna look like. It's not a car that I'm gonna take on unless I sporadically decide to use it for a big road trip, like specifically to go all the way to Italy or something and do literally two or 3,000 miles in it. Outside of that, it's basically gonna be a car that goes to events, enjoy owning, I don't wanna sell it. It's a thing that I absolutely love. It's now my only McLaren in the garage and today's been a lot of fun. A big thanks goes to SCC, to Brad, to everybody in the team for the opportunity to join today's event, the private member club and all of the different things they put together. Great group of people really enjoyed that. And of course, to everyone at Salon Privé because it's been amazing to just be there. It's been a busy day, hectic, very, very, very crowded, but good fun. Lot, lots of great cars and lots going on as well. Um, outside of that, we got to see the LaFerrari prototypes and what a story. I love uncovering and unraveling and understanding a little bit more about those types of things. So in this case, obviously finding out about the 458 looking prototype and a LaFerrari looking prototype and how all of that connected and a LaFerrari that I've seen before. Enough waffle for me though. Thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. That's it for this time and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.